In this tutorial, I'm going to show you two methods to make a simple angle bracket and how to achieve the flat pattern. Let's get into it. As usual, we're starting off with a new part. Sawworks 2022 I'm using, but I'll do for any versions. Part, okay, and our measurements is in millimeters. Once again, we'll say we're on the top plane. Sketch, draw a center rectangle. Sketch our smart dimension, and we will say uh, 100 millimeters. And then on the other side, we'll say 40 millimeters. This is our, our base sketch, clicking OK. We say sheet metal, base flange. And once again, we leave it at, no, we won't. We'll put it down to six millimeters. And then just for visual sake, we'll say play, plain carbon. And now we have a six millimeter thick piece of flat. So the first method I want to show is an edge flange. So click our button edge flange and on the box here it will allow you to select an edge. So if we select one single edge we can see a preview comes out to show which direction that flange is traveling. Click again and now we have all our options. So we are saying for this bracket, we're going at 90 degrees. The length of the flange is this distance and we'll put that down as 50 millimeters. And then we have lots of different options. One option is our bend allowance. So that brings in our K factor. And another one, which probably wouldn't apply to this part, but is a custom relief type. So K factor is definitely a tutorial in its own right. It's a, a hard thing to understand. And it's mainly based on the shear bending in equipment. So for our edge, our edge flange, we've selected this edge, flange positions. So as you can see, we can come outboard Inboard, we can do offsets, we can come at the vertical sharp, and um, lots of different options. But for this one, we will say we are putting our material outside. Now, as you can see from our, our flange here, it's quite a sharp radius. So we always use air bending tables. Your workshop will usually have their own one to say about the dies that they possess and what bend radius you can attach. On this one, we have one millimeter gap, but we've only a 0.73 radius. Most times you could unclick this use default radius, but if you're doing a much more complicated section of material, you'd be as well set them when you're setting your material because you might forget to change radius. Okay, to this, we leave use default radius ticked, if we go into our sheet metal, right click, edit feature. This is where we can change all the metal bends or features in this part. So if we will say we'll use a radius of eight millimeters with a six millimeter thickness, our K factor is 0 0.5 and our relief is 0 0.5. If we click go, you can now see that that bend is much wider. So this is only the first method and it's an edge flange method. If we want to flatten, we can just click flatten here and it'll flatten out that edge flange first. So if we decide that we want to fillet corners, and we leave it at the standard 10 mil fillet. So we fillet this corner, fillet this corner, this one, and 
this one we click go then when we click on our flat surface again back to our sheet metal click flatten see it will still say it will stay filleted so the flatten is only that object as it is flattened we can on, also unfold the object so we're calling this our fixed face we collect all bends which it's collecting that bend and we click unfold so now we can see the radius of the bend as it is folded once again fold is obviously the opposite and we fold it back up. So if we want to add holes, we can add holes, etc., and different features. You would usually add those features when the part is unfolded. So if we get rid of that fold, you would then add your features in the unfolded part. But sometimes you can, there's different methods and ways of doing it. We'll be looking at it in a future lesson. If we delete that, we're now left with our sheet metal part. The second way that I wanted to show was if we click the two of these, right click, say delete, yes. Now we're back to our first little plate. So on our base sketch, we are saying that 100 we're going to change to 175. Now we have a much longer section of plate. This would be the length of the plate if um, it was flattened. So on this, we'll put in some holes, some hole positions, I should say and we'll use our center line and we'll start from we'll just put them in sometimes it's better to do it this way we have one position there we are saying that that hole is going to be in 20 millimeters that side and we'll say uh, 20 millimeters this side. So we're going one direct hole. This is only our hole positions. So we click OK. On the other side, we'll also put in two holes and we'll put it down 10 millimeters. And we'll bring it in 20 millimeters as well. It's another position. And we could mirror that position, but we'll put in another one here. And we'll say it is, we'll do it without measurements. So we're saying that whole position and this whole position is in the same length. Click one line, shift click the second line and it will bring you up a set of relations and we click equal so this distance and this distance is now the same and another way of doing it is back to just using the measurements so now we have our our whole positions we use features and we say whole wizard and we will push so we can countersink, tap, slots, etc. But we'll just put in a countersunk and we'll put them in as M6s. Positions, click, click. Obviously, if you wanted one M10 and one M6, you would do the command twice. Now we have M6 holes. So we will fill at the corners and we put our fillets down as a six mil fillet. 
and we fill it our four corners. Now, as I said, I don't not using any shortcuts or anything like that. There is different shortcuts that can be used to add multiple fillets, etc. We'll get to them at a different date. Now, so we have very simple plate with three holes, but the plate is not bent. If we click on our front surface, click our normal two, click sketch, we get a solid line, draw it down the center of the plate, we'll bring it in, say 70 millimeters. Now I am a defined user, so I define everything. So if we take the bottom of the line, the bottom of the edge, and we'll just say five millimeters away. This command usually doesn't work if it's touching the edge. That's our sketch. So we are saying now from this line to this line here, from this edge to this line is 70 millimeters. We want to bend on this line. Sheet metal, sketch bend. Asking for our fixed face, which we're seeing is this one. And then it gives all our tributes again. So we can add custom bend radius. We can go to the inside of that 70. We can go to the mid of that 70. We can go to the outside of that 70 mil. But once again, it's up to choice. We'll actually, we leave it on the inside of the bend and we click OK. That is our bracket once again bent. That is the second um, way I wanted to show. If we click flatten, there's our flat pattern, our, our flattened unit. Now, same features and same sketches will work for numerous different brackets, um, different size brackets, etc. This one was just as easy to do it this way. Want to pull our DFX? Click on the back. Always use non countersunk side. Click, right click, export to DFX. Click save. I once again am using faces. Um, I don't usually use the sheet metal. I might uh, try that the next time. And we click export. This is our non countersunk side. Click save. Off click flatten. Our unit is once here again. File. We have to save our component. Just call it part two. File, make drawing in a, a future tutorial. I will do custom properties and drawing boxes and filling out information. View layout. I always add the tree. So there's our component. Always add a model view to show some version of our component. And then our last thing we want to add is our flat pattern. Okay. Position them, say model view, part two, flat pattern. So this is our flat pattern. We click off our flat pattern, click, right click, zoom rotate, rotate view, our box comes up, we say 90, click apply. Now our view is rotated, we close. We will drop this down here. 
we will then for the guys cutting it they'll want a measurement to show the outer parameters so we know it's 40 mil by 175 the guy bending it will want to know where that fold line is or the the bend is and it's 75.36 in sometimes it's easy to get mixed up on when and where a fold line is placed now the guy that's usually bending on the uh, air press or folders will have a very good idea of where bend lines are supposed to lie so this can be used as a guide but if you want to give him the best opportunity you would click and give him outside measurements so he knows that that bold has to space envelope from there to there and likewise from there to there so he could cut and fold one part and then he would have his um, his distances always add the thickness of the plate because that reflects on the folding always add the inner radius of the bend so on this side then if we're talking something that is plasma cut you don't particularly need to mark out all the holes but what we do have is a chamfer so we want to cut this plate into a section and show our chamfer so we're going to view layout cross section drop it here right in the dead center bring it back and we now have cross section detailed view there is automated ways of doing this as well it's no harm to know the manual way first so I would take up a detailed view of that part and then I just dimension it down so 6.6 which .6, you would this is only base the measurements and dimensions you would pretty much write in what that countersink is and the guy that's manufacturing can pick that up himself and then just for clarity clarity to say it's symmetrical you drop a center line drag through we now have another one here so if we want to do the same we can click here and click uh, this hidden lines visible center point or center line click does that one as well as I said you could write on the the actual job that there is three holes um, for a six mil or you could visually show it this way so that's pretty much that if you were to hand manufacture this you would obviously put in your dimensions here and here likewise with anything that's related to there you'd put in your um, radius of your corners etc and then once again we go save down as part two save so yeah, just save it as a PDF again there is a handy uh, little box to tick here view PDF after saving if you're doing multiple files sometimes it's just handier to view the PDF after so we replace that and there is your simplified drawing of the PDF that was another simple tutorial on SOLIDWORKS sheet metal Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.